worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We'd like to say good morning to YouTube, the ones that is listening by radio. We thank God for you. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to worship him, give him praises. Give him praises for what he has done. Lord, when, when you find anything that looks like sin, Lord, I ask that you remove it 
right now. Because, Lord, I know you're going to find some sin because we all have sin and fallen short of your glory. Lord, I can even go a little further. Ask the Lord to create in me a clean heart and renew the righteousness right now, Lord. So I can call on your name. Father, I'm calling on you right now. Because, Lord, we need you. Lord, I need you. Father, we, we need you right now because, Lord, we need
worship button. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All my trust is in Jesus.
bless us one more time. To come together and to worship Him. It, it's good when the saints of God can come together and worship. Amen. So we, we, we give honor to God this morning. We thank Him for His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. All right. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, our leader, and our guide, the one who empowers us to do God's work. We thank God for our deacons, our mothers, our younger ones. I thank God for you last Sunday. But this congregation, by us and our musicians, those who may be viewing virtually, we thank God for you. It is truly a blessing to be here this morning. In spite of what you may have went through on last week. But the good thing about it, we're here this morning by the grace of God. If it had not been for the Lord, where would we be? So we thank you this morning. We give him all the praise, the honor, and the glory. All right. Because he has been good to us. <laughs> Even when we were not good to one another, we were yeah. not good to ourselves, yeah. he was still good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the good thing about it, he's still working in our lives. Yeah. Not only working in our lives, but working on us. Yeah. I'm glad to know that he's still working. Because yeah. I. I'm a work in progress, and I don't know about nobody else, but I'm a work in progress. And I'm glad that he didn't give up on me. I'm glad that he that he didn't throw me away. People may may push you away and throw you away, but God will never throw you away. He will never turn his back on you. Like we turn our backs on one another. The Lord continue to work on us. Amen. Amen. Now let, let, let us pray this morning. Gracious Father, come this morning as humble as I know how. Seeking your guidance. Asking, oh God, this morning that you would speak to us. Asking that you would open our hearts to receive your word. Asking that the Holy Spirit right now, Holy Spirit have your way. Holy Spirit have your way. Holy Spirit have your way. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to invite your attention to a very well-known scripture uh, coming from Matthew, the fifth chapter. Verses 13 through 16. Matthew chapter 5. Verses 13 through 16. Matthew chapter 5. Verses 13 through 16. I'm reading from the King James Version. Verse 13 reads. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith well shall it be salty? It is this thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, the city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it in and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. I want to talk this morning. Just for a minute, so. Amen. 
disciples' responsibility. A disciple's responsibility. If you are a disciple, that means that you are following someone. And as we know as Christians, we know that we follow Jesus. So if you've been born again, you've been saved. You ought to be a disciple of Jesus. Because there, there are many people uh, that are, are following something or someone. But we as Christians follow Jesus. Uh, 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 God's son. And we, we, we come into faith believing that he is the son of God. And that it was him that paid the ransom for our sins, something that you and I could not do. So this morning, I, I, I want to let the world know that I am a disciple of Jesus. Do I have any witness, witnesses this morning that, 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 that can that can flat foot stand and say that I am a disciple of Jesus? I follow the world for too many years, but I, I, I'm glad that he stepped right in, right on time, and changed my direction. Not only did he change my direction, he changed my life. Yeah, a disciple's responsibility. Uh, this is coming from uh, the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus is set to, to talk with his disciples, and, 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 and uh, he had just uh, healed a great amount of people in chapter 4. In verse 25, and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. There was a multitude of people following Jesus because his fame had went out when he healed those that were sick. And done all these miracles, he had a following. But now he's coming to teach them about being a disciple. And, and, and as being a disciple, you're going to endure some things in this life. And there, there ought to be some characteristics that show that you are a disciple of Christ. Because we see uh, uh, in the Beatitudes, uh, in verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When one is poor in spirit, it means that I, I, I need spiritual help. I, I need to, I, I'm not independent on my spiritual help. I'm depending on the Lord to help me to be spiritual, to help me to be that holy being that he has called me to be, that he has called you to be. Uh, there are no pride in this. Uh, it's only dependence. You have to be humble to know that it's God that has given you holiness and, 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 and given you a spiritual life through his son, Jesus. Everything that I have, all the blessings come through Jesus. Yeah, you can't be prideful. Cause I, I, and some Christians are prideful. You can tell it in the way they talk. You can tell it in the way that they act. But, but, but he's calling people to be humble. My dependence is on God. Because see, I had no part in spiritual things until he came into my life and I received him as my Lord and Savior. Because all of us at one time was in darkness. Had no hope. But when Jesus shined his light on me, some things began to change. Some of my ways began to change. And he's still working on us daily. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because all of us fall short of the glory of God. Amen. But yet he's still working on us this morning. Yes. Do anybody know that he's still working yes. on them? Because if you can't attest that he's working on you, you might have a little pride in yourself. I know he's working on me. Because it's still some things that I have in my life 
that I need God to move yeah. to things that I need him to correct. Come on, man. And he's doing it. He's doing it. He, he, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That, 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 that we, we, have, we have a promise here that, that, that it is, we, we, we have the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And, and that's where we're all trying to make it. And without Jesus, you can't make it because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you need direction, call on him. If you need to know how he expects you to live, call on him. Get in the word and study the word. You may not understand it all. But he'll help. I need help this morning. Do anybody else need help this morning? Then he says that uh, uh, blessed are they that mourn. So you go mourn in this life. You, you go mourn because of the things we see. The things we experience. We live in a world where there's hatred, yeah, come on. where there is uh, racism, yeah. where there is injustice. Uh, we live in a world where, where, where the love has waxed cold. Yeah. But I tell you, if you turn to Jesus, uh, all the love that you could want, need, and desire, he has it for you. Yeah, yeah you go mourn sometime on this side. Even Jesus wept. It said that he mourned over Jerusalem because he had sent his prophets. And some of them they stoned, some of them they killed. But he wasn't through with them. Just like he's not through with you and I. Uh, uh, that, that, that we, we, ought to, we ought to care about the things that God cares about. He cares about people's lives. And you and I ought to mourn when we see those who are not saved. We ought to be concerned. If you are a disciple, you ought to be concerned about the souls of others that are lost. While they're still breathing, we ought to be out telling them, and not only telling them, but to live before them a holy life. A holy life. He said, for they shall be comforted. One day, we will be comforted. You, 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 one day we will be comforted when we leave this side and, and go on to that eternal side. I'm no longer in the temporal, I'm in the eternal, and I will be comforted. Because every day you, you turn on the news, you, you hear some bad news. Some bad news. People killing one another. These, these disasters that come. Yeah, we mourn because even through these disasters, somebody may not have been saved. But yet there's still some people that are still alive that are dead walking around. They need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. We have to be on our job to tell those about Jesus and what he has done in our life. And what he's continually doing in our lives. Well, well. He goes on in verse 5. It says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. As a follower of Christ, you ought to be meek. Some people think when you're meek that you're passive, that you're a pushover. No, you have to realize if you're meek, you're really strong. Because see, some things can upset you, but you don't have to respond in a negative way. Yeah, all of us get angry at times, but it tells you, get angry, but do not sin. Yeah, meekness. We ought to walk about with meekness. I, I, I ought to be meek. In other words, humble. Is there any humble people in the house this morning? Is there any humble people in the house this morning? Yeah, yeah, if, if you're not humble, ask God to humble you. Because see, uh, just like I said, if you're prideful, you won't be humble. But God knows just how to bring you down. 
But see, if you're prideful, that's coming a fall. So, so if you got any pride in you, you need to ask God to take away this pride. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Help me to be meek. Yes, Help me to be kind. Help me to be loving. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Help me to be concerned about us. Then he goes on to say, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Are you hungry? You know how when, 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 when you're physically hungry, you know how to satisfy it, don't you? You feed yourself. Uh, he says, to, 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 to hunger and thirst after righteousness. I, 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 as a disciple, you have a responsibility to walk in righteousness. Uh, uh, you have the responsibility to live a holy life. Uh, uh, and, and if you're going to be righteous, uh, you, 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 you need to look to God because within yourself, you, you, you can't find any righteousness. But when you get a hold of Jesus, he pours into you his righteousness because we had none of this until he came, until he imparted into us. Yeah, a disciple ought to be thirsting and hungering after righteousness. And the righteousness is the word of God. We are to hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God. I, I, I can't be a disciple if I'm not practicing the word of God. I, I can talk it all day, but if I never practice it, something's wrong somewhere. I'm just only being a hypocrite. And, and, and a disciple of Christ ought not be a hypocrite. You ought to be true. You ought to be faithful to the word of God. This is how we know how he expects us to live our lives. We can't live our life just any kind of way. We ought not be like the world. We all not talk like the world. We all not think like the world. Come on now. Come on. As if you hung and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled with it. And somebody will see the righteousness of God in you by the way you talk, by the way you live, by the way you treat people. By the way you handle situations. Then he goes on to say, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. All goes back to Jesus, who was filthy, as filthy rags. But it was the blood of Jesus that washed us clean, that made us pure. As white as the snow. All right. I'm here this morning. Yeah. Not because of me. Well. Not because of anything that I have done. It was all of what Jesus had done for you and for me. All right. yeah. He made us pure. Yeah. He separated us. He made us holy. For only the pure in heart shall see God. We know that God is a spirit. My physical eyes cannot see God. Just like the Holy Spirit, I, I, I cannot see the Holy Spirit, but, but I can see his actions. Uh, 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 just like with the wind, I can't see the wind, but I can see the effects of the wind. So, so the, uh, uh, if, if others see you, they ought to see Jesus in you. All of us have read His Word. All of us have read uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, uh, that, that, that tells us the life of Jesus, how loving and how kind and how compassionate. He was. 
Is there any love in your life? Is there any compassion? Is there any mercy? Is there any forgiveness in your life this morning? I tell you this morning that if you are a disciple of Jesus, some things you ought to let go. Put it in the back and forget about it. What someone has done to you, let it go. And be that disciple that he called you to be. Somebody say, I, I, I just can't do that. But, but I want to tell you and remind us this morning that Jesus has done something for us that we could not do for ourselves. When he went to Calvary, bearing your sins and my sins, the whole world's sins, and nailed them to the cross. So I'll, we, we ought to put some things behind us. Let it go. Quit, quit adding fuel to the fire. Let it go. Let it go. That is a disciple's responsibility. Not to hold grudges. Not to fight amongst one another. When something's not going your way, you want to fight. That's not the way of a follower of Jesus. Jesus could have fought many times. But all Jesus did was put the word on it. So if you fight, fight with the word of God. You don't have to pick up your, 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 your weapons. You don't have to speak things that you ought not speak. Because we're, we're, we're called to speak light, not death. Because all of us, all of us was in the trenches of death. But when Christ brought us out of those trenches and placed our feet on a solid rock. And that rock was Christ. And that rock is Christ. So he ought to be your foundation. The foundation of a disciple, a follower of him. Are you willing to follow him this morning? Are you willing to follow him every day? of your life until he said enough is done. Yeah. I think I'm going to follow him until he said enough is done. Yeah. We know that we, we, we will see those that are against us. Because verses 10, uh, uh, 10 through 12 talks about persecution. But we can't let persecution stop us from our responsibility. We have to show the world who we serve. Not just talking, but to live it daily. Oh, I know you trip and fall sometimes. I trip and fall sometimes. But we don't have to stay down. Repent. Get up. Continue to live a holy life. Get mad about everything. Talk to God. Talk to God. You may not feel your best today. But still, there's a responsibility to live a life that pleases God. Things may not be going your way, but still, there's a responsibility to live a life that pleases God. People may not be treating you right, but still, there's a responsibility may be unemployed. Still, there's a responsibility. Still a responsibility. And there's a concern. If you are a disciple, there's a concern that I want to live my life. I want to live a life that pleases God. And, and, and I want others to live a life that pleases God. There's a responsibility. Verse 13. Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. 
We know that salt preserves. Before there was refrigeration, they were hanging the meat and salt it down to preserve. Salt also brings flavor. I realize the 4th of July is coming up. You're going to prepare your meat. You're going to add to it. Don't, know, don't, don't, don't anyone, I don't believe anyone like anything that's black. You, 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 you like flavor to your meat. Because I, I, I can see people when something's not tasting right and they, they, they don't have enough flavor, what do they do? Grab salt and add to it to bring some flavor. Just like you and I, we ought to bring flavor everywhere we walk. You ought to bring flavor in your home. You ought to bring flavor on your job. You ought to bring flavor in the house of God. Wherever you are, you ought to have some flavor about yourself. Uh, when you walk up, people ought to see something different about you. Yeah, the, the, the reason why they see, see, see something different about you is because you are a child of God. And as children of God, we're not going to compromise. We're not going to compromise. I, I, I believe in a dead, buried, and risen Savior. So wherever you go, not that you're being a show-off, but I, I, I just know that I, 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 what he has done for me gives me joy. Gives me something to shout about. Them. Because when I think about the condition I was in and what he pulled me out of, the mess that I was in, and placed my feet on that solid ground. That's why I can walk around with flame. You can walk around with flavor. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when you walk up, the atmosphere all the change. Yeah, because I, I have the Spirit of God on the inside of me. That's why I have flavor. That's why you have flavor. And when you walk up, the conversation all the change. And, and if they continue to talk, you ought to tell them about your God, what he has done for you, and what he's continuing to do in your life. Oh, we have something to talk about. Okay. We can talk about Jesus. The greatest gift I've ever received. And this gift continually gives every day. Thank God for his son. Thank God for his Holy Spirit. His but he said, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salty? It is this for good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of man. As I said, we ought to bring flavor. But 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 if, 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 if he said if the salt loses its savor, it's good for nothing. So in other words, if, if I'm not a, 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 a walking and living like Christ has called me to live, I, I'm not effective. Uh, we're not effective if I'm uh, lining up with the world. If you're lining up with the world, you 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 just considering this level. I want to get to higher heights in God. So if I'm talking like the world, living like the world, I have lost my flavor. I have lost my flavor. I'm not being effective. And most of the time you hear people, uh, and, 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 and they call themselves Christian, and they living just like me. Why should I live like them? Why should I want to accept Jesus if they're doing the same thing? If they can make it, I, I surely can make it. 
We have a responsibility. We are ambassadors of Christ. If you are an ambassador, you represent whoever you serve. Yeah, I, 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 we represent Christ. We are ambassadors. So therefore, I ought to be like my, 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 my leader, my king, my lord, my savior, my God. I want to have effect on people's lives. You ought to want to have effect on people's lives. The reason you're here today is because you want to have effect on people's lives. See, when we walk through those doors, we ought to have a smile on our face. We ought to uh, be able to say good morning to one another. Or we ought to address one another as our sisters and brothers because we are in the family of God. Yeah, you need to shake yourself a little bit, spread yourself a little bit. Let them see Jesus in you. Let them see Jesus in you. Yeah, about the way you live your life, how you treat one another. I want God to be pleased with me. I want to be effective for him. Because, uh, 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 just because you got your salvation don't mean you need to be quiet. You ought to speak up. You ought to tell that person that don't know about Jesus. You ought to tell that person that, that, that Jesus can change your status, change your state, change your condition. If you only believe in him and receive him as Lord and Savior of your life. In verse 14, the disciples' responsibility, he says that you are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And he that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You think about a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Anything that's lying low can hide. Everything that's high can be seen. You look at the mountains. Even I'm standing far back, I can see what's on top of that mountain. He said, you are the light of the world. Meaning that you have a responsibility to lead people. Just like a lighthouse when it's shining. And they are sailing on the sea and, and they can see the light far off. You know, it, it just takes a little bit of light to light up a dark room. You ought to be that light to somebody that's in darkness. You ought to exemplify the light. And Jesus is the light. And I'm marching in his orders. I'm marching to his uh, drum beat. Uh, not to my beat, but to his beat. Because see, there's error in my beat, but there's no error in his beat. So I'm going to march to his beat. I'm going to be that light. Will you be that light? Will you be that example to lead somebody to Jesus? We have that responsibility. What a great responsibility it is to be a light to this dark and decaying world. Oh, it may be decaying, 
But God ought to have some lights walking uh, in the paths. Uh, he ought to have some lights uh, walking in homes, uh, on jobs. Everywhere we place our feet, we ought to let our light shine. And so this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Will you let your light shine? I'm going to let it shine in the morning. I'm going to let it shine in the noon day. I'm going to let it shine in my midnight hour. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. Will you let it shine? Yeah. Will you let it shine? Yeah. Whatever your situation is, will you let it shine? Yeah. Uh, we, we're going to experience some things in this life. But I, 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 I'm I going to let my light shine. And I'm going to let it shine bright. Uh, because I have the power to let it shine bright. Uh, when I lean on my Savior, not only that, when the Holy Spirit, he lives on the inside of me, that's why I can let my light so shine. Let it shine, let it shine bright, bright in a dark situation. Let it shine, let it shine, St. Andrew. Every day of your life, let it shine. When storms are raging, uh, let it shine. When people are against you, uh, let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. You can't be stingy with this light. Verse 15, neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So I, I, I'll not let Jesus go unnoticed in my words or in my actions. I ought to be telling everybody that I can about Jesus, who is the light of the world, who gives you and I light. That is awesome when I think about it. We're Calvin. We were messed up. Full of sin. Falling short of God's glory. Had no hope. And you know what? Even after he saved us, he knew how we were going to be. It's amazing. It's awesome. God's love. God's love. That's why I have to let my light shine. Because he's been so good to me. He's been so good to you. He's been good to this whole world. He's good to those that he even rejected because he woke them up this morning to give them another opportunity. I can remember he gave me opportunity for 28 long years. I'm glad he moved on me. He didn't force me, but he helped me to realize the life that I was living. My light wasn't shining. I didn't have a light to shine, but when he came in, he lit a fire. Yeah. Did he light a fire yeah. in your life? Yeah. Did he do some change yeah. in your life? Yeah. Did he change some circumstances yeah. and situations and conditions in your life? Yeah. Did he do it to yeah. because you weren't wise enough or smart enough to change your condition? You didn't have the power to change your condition. But it was him, when you received him as your Lord and Savior, he stepped in and he began to make a change in your life. He began to do some reconstruction, in other words. 
is still building on you. He's molding you into what he would have you to make to be. Who he would have you to be. And the disciples responsibility. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before me. Amen. That they may see your good works. Yeah. Glorify. Yeah. Glorify. Yeah. So I'm letting my light shine. Come on. Come on. And, and, and I'm, 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 I'm doing examples of good works. Not for my glory. Not for your glory, but for his glory. It's for his glory, not my glory, because I fall short. But I'm trying to get them to see the one who's perfect in all of his ways. It says that God is great and greatly to be praised. Not my glory, but his glory. The responsibility, the disciples' responsibility, is to present Christ. Amen. To present Christ to this world Amen. that's dying. Amen. To present Christ to this world to offer them eternal life. Amen. Nothing that you and I could do. To save ourselves, nor save anyone else. But as a disciple, to lead them to the one who can and will save that you believe. You believe that he died on that old rugged cross. You believe that he was buried in a borrowed tomb. But I'm so glad, I'm so, so glad that right early in the third appointed morning, God raised him from the grave with all power of heaven and earth in his hand, which has given us life and given it more power. The responsibility of the disciple is to tell the world about Jesus and live a life. To live a life that lines up with the life of Jesus. The best of your ability with the help of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. And I will stand in this invitation of Christian discipleship. If you are not a follower of Jesus, today is the day of salvation. You can come today. You can make him Lord and Savior of your life. And you too can become a follower. That you too can tell somebody about Jesus, what he's doing and what he has done in your life. Will you come today? No matter your age, he said he's willing to see none perish. Because if you hold on to this life, that's all you're going to get. And when you look around in this world, so much disaster, so much hurt, so much pain. Injustices in this world, the hatred in this world, the lack of love in this world. Come on and be a part of something that is everlasting. And the only way to be a part of it 
is to have a relationship with Jesus. Will you come today? He's waiting. He loved you so much that he gave his life for you. Ain't you glad he laid it down and picked it back up? Ain't you glad that one day he's coming back to take you from all this misery? Are you glad this morning that you know Jesus? Some of us uh, 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 would love to meet some celebrities. But I, I tell you today, they do, they do not compare to meeting with Jesus. Oh, I may can see him with my physical eyes, but spiritually, I can see him when I read the word of God. What he has done and what he's doing. And knowing that he's coming back to receive him the way he is. That yeah, might be awesome. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah. I see that it is, and I may God bless you, may God keep you. Yeah. Yeah. We thank God for each one of you this morning. I hope and pray that something was said to help us be better disciples. That are followers of Jesus. I'm trying my best with the help of the Holy, Holy Spirit to be a faithful disciple. Is there anybody else this morning that want to be a faithful disciple? Yeah. Yeah. Also, this morning I want to say before I forget this month goes out to say. For those of you who are celebrating a birthday or anniversary, we would like to say happy birthday and happy anniversary to you. May God bless you with many, many, many more. Amen. 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 I thank God for St. Andrew this morning. Amen. I thank God for every member of St. Andrew. Those who are present, those who are not present. I thank God for you. And I continuously pray for you. God's strength. God's help. God's peace in our lives. So if all hearts and minds are satisfied, let us pray. Thank you for that perfect example of Jesus. Lord, help us to pattern our lives after Jesus. Lord, help us to be those faithful disciples that you call us to be. Father, we lift up those this morning that don't know you as a part of this. Lord, touch them right where they are. Let them know that you love them. Let them know, God, that you sent your son Jesus to free us from sin. Give us eternal life. Father, we pray for those that are sick this morning. I'm asking that you would touch them. Heal their bodies this morning. Heal their minds. Those that are dealing with mental issues, physically, spiritually broken this morning. We pray healing in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray for those that are bereaved. Remember the birth of Remember the length of that this morning. All those that I don't know about this morning that are spiritually believe in Father God. I know you know, Father. And I know that you are a comfort to us. We give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor. Lord God, we we just so thank you. Full of gratitude. Grateful this morning. Because you've been so good to us. And we ask you to bless all those who never 
people out spiritually today. We pray, Lord, that you would just help them through whatever they're going through today. Lord, it may be somebody here that's going through having a problem. I don't know, but you know. Let them know that they can lean and depend on you. So, Father, we thank you. We love you, Father. As we leave this place, Father, never out of your presence, but see us safely to our different destinations. And Lord, help us to let our light shine daily that we may bring glory to your name. Others may see our good deeds, and they too will glorify you. We thank you and love you in Jesus' name. All the saints of God say amen. Amen. St. Andrew P.B. Church, where Elder Buford Moore III is pastor, is located at 1393 Swancott Road, Madison, Alabama, 35756.